Coming up on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake, the Cougars open the season on a winning note in front of a sold-out crowd at LaVell Edwards Stadium. Now the Cougs hit the road for back-to-back -back games, starting with a short week showdown with SMU. And we're breaking it all down with the coach and quarterback Jake Retzloff, next on BYU TV and ESPN+. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is presented by Intermountain Health official medical provider of BYU Athletics. All right. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. And good evening once again, Cougar Nation. We welcome you back inside its studio seat at the BYU Broadcasting Building in Provo, Utah. It's our week two edition of BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. We're live and on demand via the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps and ESPN+. Plus. Coming up on tonight's Week 2 broadcast, we will look back on Saturday night's sold-out season opener with Southern Illinois. We will then look ahead to Friday night's early season marquee matchup with the Mustangs of SMU. Deep Blue will profile starting quarterback Jake Retzloff. Then Jake himself will join us for the first time as our in-studio guest. We'll have some Q&A with Jake and the coach and then the weekly BYU football trivia question and check out this week's uniform for Dallas. To get the show on the road, let's bring in the man who is in his ninth season as the leader of the BYU football program, the man with the moves, the former fullback himself, head coach of the BYU Cougars, Kalani Sitake. <laughs> All right, indeed. Yeah, ready you know, to roll. The smiles are a little bigger after a win all the time, uh, and uh, it, I'm glad we're smiling about so many different things this week because it was such a strange end to last week in the hours leading up to, to the game, and I, I think maybe to, to right off the start, maybe let Cougar Nation know how our friend Jay Hill is doing after a difficult time last week, but we think best-case scenario after all was said yeah. and done. Well, I mean, Jay's, honestly, Jay wishes we would stop talking about him. And, After and, and tonight, we will. We promise. <laughs> no, but I mean, <laughs> but I, I reminded him that a lot of people care about him. A lot of people love him. And so uh, I, I think he he was just talking about how, how awesome the, the support that he's received from all the fans and and uh, everybody. So thank you for, for guys uh, keeping him in your prayers. And he's back, you know, but um, he's going to have to be uh, probably, I, I think he liked the press box a little bit. So he's probably going to be up in the box for a little bit. And uh, But yeah, he's in, he's in meetings. We just have to be really careful with and then, you know, Sarah, his wife, is, is helping us um, just kind of make sure that he's not doing too much because he's, he's, he, we have to save him from himself sometimes because he just wants to work. Uh, but, yeah, we're excited that he's back with us. The players, uh, we're really excited that he was at the game, and, and uh, I'm, I'm fired up to have my friend back with me. So here we go. Yeah, so he's back on the job and, and hopefully back to, to good health as soon as possible, and uh, we're just all really pleased about it. Yeah, it just puts a lot of things in perspective, you know, and, and, and um, I mean, I I look at him and, and, and the things that he's, I mean, he, he, he's been in pretty good shape and he's runs three miles a day and things like that. And I, I eat like three donuts a day. So, <laughs> and so it's like a, the, uh, so, I mean, it just, you just never know. And, and I think it's, it's a good reminder. Everyone's talking about getting checkups and stuff like that. So yeah, I'll do it after the year or whatever, maybe during the bye week, but, um, it's just, you know, we, 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 you just, you're so caught up in the football um, part of it, and, and you, sometimes you just have to take care of yourself, too. And I'm just glad that, that uh, it all worked out okay and that um, modern-day technology is amazing. Did, did anybody say happy anniversary to you today, by chance? No. Why, why would it be? <laughs> Eight years ago today was your first game as BYU head football coach. Well, let's go. That, that, September 3rd. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> September 3rd, 2016, eight years ago today. There you are in Glendale, Arizona. Took on the Wildcats. A lot of BYU fans in the stands. Wild game with a dramatic finish. This was game number one for you. Yeah, that was fun. I mean, that, that's, yeah, that, that was the, the me without any gray hair yet. So, <laughs> I mean, this, this, this gave me a couple gray hairs right there. But, yeah, that was what a great opportunity. I mean, an opportunity for, for me to just be there and, and, and to see the team uh, you know, with, with that first game, but the fans were amazing there in in, in, in that stadium. Um, we had, it's, it's been it's been such a cool journey for me. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. 
I remember we were in that building, and you're kind of in Arizona's backyard. You were in their state, but it felt like the BYU fans kind of ran the building that night in the state of Arizona. You got your first, I mean, you knew about Cougar Nation, but as the head coach, you got to experience what it's like to be supported by fans away from home. Yeah, and it's really hard not to get emotional when you walk out of, of uh, you know, out of the tunnel and, and onto the field, and you just feel the energy from the fans. It, it's it's a lot of fun, man. And so there's nothing like it. And uh, I mean, I, I I love being a player and having Cougar Nation embrace me and, and the team. And um, I just that was one of the best feelings I've ever had in my life. And in terms of having people just believe in you and support and cheer you on and. I think the next best thing to play in is, is coaching. I mean, I, I love to play still, but <laughs> I, I might have one play in me. That's about it. <laughs> but the uh, but coaching definitely gets you in there. And, and, and um, yeah, and I, I just love being being part of, uh, of these young men's lives. Would that one play be like first and goal from the one? Or are we, what are we talking about here? <laughs> the, the one play? Yeah. I, I'm not even sure. I I'm, might be a kickoff that goes at the back of the end zone. <laughs> okay. Where I don't have to run into anybody. <laughs> I was hoping for a goal line plunge from you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, uh, I don't even think I got that okay. in me anymore. <laughs> that, 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 that flashes us forward, speaking of fan support, to this past Saturday. FCS team, and the new capacity was 62,073, I think. Yet we somehow got more than 63,000, almost 64, into the building on Saturday night. What an electric atmosphere for a season opener. It was tremendous. It, it was awesome, and, and, and just love... Like I said before, our, our fan base is, is big time. They, they are a, they've been a power conference fan base from the very beginning, and um, I love being part of that fan base myself, my whole life. You know, so um, they can they can uh, count on a, a, a fan that's now the head coach, and um, maybe sometimes I make some calls as a head as a fan, but I think they can all understand that I, I know what they want, I know their frustrations, and and I, I know their desires, and so. Uh, I definitely want to make sure our players under, under appreciate our fan base, and I think they do. And when you see our players embrace it, and um, you know, just just the overall experience, the the fans there at the game were they were awesome. We're, look, we're looking forward now going on the road and and seeing the fans on the road because it, it's it's great to see the fan base all over the place. When you're Lavelle Edwards Stadium, you're there to to win a game, to to coach, to get on the call sheet, to to be on the headset, to be fully focused. But do you ever allow yourself to, to uh, just realize what the fan experience is like these days, what the people in athletics have done to make game night such an amazing experience now? It's a, it's a show. It's a feeling. It's a vibe. It's really amazing. Yeah, and, and the, the new players on our team, they were enjoying the whole, the whole atmosphere and the entire um, – it's, it's a production because you look at the people that put so much energy that go into from the, from the, the band – to, to the Cougarettes, to the cheer team, to the, I mean, there, there's just so much involved, uh, so many people involved, and I mean, I I, I always love the, the fire knife dancers, so they're they're, they're my favorite. I'm just so it, it's cool when you I, I take take a peek over on the other side and see Southern Illinois and their fans are I mean their players and fans are enjoying the whole the uh, the whole night too. So it was a lot of fun, and like I said, I, we still have the tradition of giving ice cream out to 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 um, the opposing team's fans and family. And so one day the head coach will get an ice cream. <laughs> I don't know if that will go well, but I, I think I can multitask and be able to eat ice cream and call plays at the same time. We hope, we hope to find out <laughs> at some point. Uh, for the fifth consecutive season and the eighth time in Kalani's nine seasons now as head coach, uh, BYU won its lid lifter. 41-13 was the final as BYU improved its all-time record against FCS foes to 19-0. and Let's check out the highlights from Saturday Presented by Waystar, the Cougars and the Salukis, cats and dogs at LaBelle Edwards Stadium. All right, uh, tone-setting defensive series, a three and out for your defense to get the game underway. Yeah, that was really good and just get the ball back to the offense. And, you know, op offense was able to keep that. That was a long drive. And, and, a couple um, fourth downs? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind going for it on fourth down. Just don't, don't make me do that decision all the time. But, but if, if, if it comes down to it, you probably know where I'm leaning anyways. First touchdown of the season was Hinkley Ropati. Get the ball back, and then Jake goes about 60-plus yards in the air to JoJo here for number two. Great ball and great protection, and just so happy for JoJo. You, you see in social media the response from his mother and his family. They've been through a lot, so I'm excited that he was able to make that play. That was a weird play. That probably shouldn't have been a catch, but it stood. They didn't. I tried to call you couldn't get your timeout, yeah. and they ended up scoring to make it 
14 to 6 after a missed PAT. This is a big field goal right before half. Gives you some momentum back at 17 to 6. Yeah, we have a lot of trust in Will, and, and he missed one earlier, so it was good to get him back on the. I mean, he, he's usually automatic. It was a 50 yarder. And early in quarter number three, another deep ball from Jake, this time to Keelan Marion. He had white shirts around him, he had a striped shirt around him, and he yeah. found the football. I don't know if you want to throw one versus three, but I mean, <laughs> if we make the play, then that's fine. But that, that's sometimes Jake makes those decisions, and, and that one worked out. LJ had a fourth down run to set up his touchdown reception. Then Matava Tase with his first touchdown as a Cougar. Yeah, so happy for him, and he's done a great job for us. And Sometimes those tight ends do a lot of do all the hard work and blocking, and it's good to see them get rewarded with a touchdown. SIU's last score of the night came courtesy of a nice scamper from DJ Williams. Good player, really good player, and athletic and long, and I mean super fast. So that that's all, that was difficult, but we've got to handle the, the QB run game. LJ gets his second touchdown of the night, seventh of his BYU career. Jacob Robinson with his first pick of 2024, career pick number nine for number zero. Yep, he was here last week. Last yep. week, we said everyone challenged him to have how many was it? Five. Just five. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see if he can get that. That's one down. One down, four to go. And then the final points come courtesy of Will Farron. Gary Bohannon takes the knee, and BYU ends up with a 41 to 13 win. The Cougs go to one and zero on the year. Here are some final stats from the win presented by Smarty, BYU over the Salukis of SIU. They were a playoff team in the FCS last year, picked uh, 11th by the coaches this year. This will be a good football team at their division. Yeah, and they, they lost uh, an overtime game, the, the overtime in the playoffs to Idaho, mm -hmm. who gave um, Oregon a run for their money last week too. So uh, we knew going into this game that they're a dangerous team. We, we want, wanted to give it all our attention and make sure that, that, um, that we just don't assume that they're going to come here and and just be happy to be here, you know. So they, I felt like they gave us their, their best shot. We gave them. We we'd still have some more things to, to fix. But I felt like we we actually had the right mindset and the right approach to the game. Let's spotlight a couple of things from the game. Uh, last week at this time, uh, it wasn't yet publicly known who your starting quarterback was going to be. Of course, uh, Jake Retzloff won the job and, and showed why he's your starting quarterback right now. He had the experience of last year, got better in the offseason, had a great opener. Yeah, and I, I think that was really helpful for him to be that he's been in our system. He's been with our, 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 our I mean, our vocabulary. And, and so it, you could tell that he's a, a lot more comfortable with what he's doing compared to when he first started uh, last year. And so all that time in the, in the system, I think, has been really helpful for him. And uh, he made some good decisions. The best thing is that he took care of the football. I think there was one throw that I was a little nervous about. I think it's to, to Kibo on, on, on the sideline. Broken up. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and for the most part, we took care of the football as an offense. But I, I was really pleased with Jake. He, if, you, if you ask him, you'll, you will because he'll be here tonight. But he, he knows that there's a lot of plays that he can still make. And, and, but I, I like his decision making and, and the, the, that he takes care of the football. Um, and as an offense, though, we had uh, two footballs on the ground. It, that can't happen, you know. So it would be a different football game if we turned the ball over. So uh, that's what we can, we, can, we can definitely take care of a little bit more. For Jake, though, career highs in passing yards, completion percentage, touchdown passes, and pass efficiency rating, great opener. All right, uh, the O-line. Uh, looking a little different with the Caleb Etienne moving from right side to left side. Uh, Connor Pays back, man in the middle. Uh, just two sacks allowed on the night. 179 rush yards for the team. Uh, a Rod said that uh, Caleb played maybe probably his best game at BYU. Uh, what do you think of the O line in game yeah, one? I thought they did a great job, and you could tell um, that Coach Woods has done a great job getting these guys ready. Um, you know, it's tough sledding a little bit when you're when you're running the ball, but you have to be committed to it. Um, Southern Illinois, this, that's their specialty, stopping the run and then creating havoc on, on, at the line of scrimmage. So I thought uh, to get that many yards in the run game was really good for us. Um, and it, even though their exp expertise and they load in the box to take away the run, sometimes you just have to, uh, you have to put your dominance on the field and, and say we're still going to come after you this way. So I, I think that was good for us and it was good, it was good motivation for our players to give them a lot of confidence going into this week. Another offensive note, more BYU fans getting to know JoJo. JoJo Phillips is a heck of a player. Yeah, I mean, and he's, you know, choosing to redshirt him was smart last year. And it was hard because he's, he's such a great athlete. But uh, he's put in his time, and, and you can see some of the things that he can do as an athlete. I mean, he's – and uh, the, the thing that I liked about him is that he had a good day blocking too. So uh, in order for receivers to play here, they, they have to be able to block for us and help spring some big runs. But it doesn't help – it doesn't hurt that you can do this kind of stuff too. Just I mean, run down the field past somebody. Yeah, and he's, yeah. A, he's a great athlete. I mean, he, he was a highly recruited 
um, receiver, and I, I'm glad that he trusts Fessy in, 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 in you know, getting him ready for the season and, and even going through his true freshman year last year. And then I, I think he's ready for, to make a lot more plays for us. To the other side of the ball, uh, and even though he was very elusive and really challenges you in the run game, uh, D.J. Williams, that is, uh, BYU did sack him twice. Uh, seven TFLs on the night, along with three hurries, and a lot of defensive ends got time in this game having a run at D.J. Williams. Seven defensive ends played. How do you feel that uh, in terms of you know, pressure and maybe disruptive plays, the defense performed? Yeah, I just like the overall knockback at the line of scrimmage. You're seeing a lot of the, the royal blue in the backfield. Which is good, and, and I like having that uh, aggressive style of defense. And so, um, that that was that was something that we wanted to establish. It, it's taken a while, and, and it, it, but these are a lot of the guys have been in the system for a while, and, and then the the new players have been kind of that's what we recruited to to the system. And, and so when you see some of these freshmen that are playing, there's a reason why Jay and the staff decided to go with young guys at different places. And I think we're going to have to use more than just 11 guys to play. We're, it's going to be Good rotation and a good group of young men that, that I think can highlight their, their, their strengths and get us some big plays. All right, that's Kalani's look back. Time now for the players' perspective on the season opener as we visit with one of the stars of the game for BYU. He had that receiving touchdown and a rushing score on Saturday. And tonight, running back L.J. Martin joins our Jerem Jordan inside the film room. He had a great game, dude. 5.2 yards per pop. Uh, you know, come up, coming off some surgery out of spring. How'd you feel in this one? Well, I felt really good. It was my first time getting contact, so just being back out there with the guys was really fun. Okay, let's talk about some of your runs. Uh, Ten yards to the right, a little quick toss for uh, a first down. So right here we got a little pitch play. You see the pullers getting out there. We got Austin and Kyle making the way. And the guys on the perimeter, you see Cody right there with a the big block. Seal the edge, and then we'll get on the other angle. Cody let him know, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did at the end right there. You see Cody going out there doing the nasty work, getting that block, Keelan in there too. And right there, you see Cody let him know a little bit. There's been a lot of conversation, obviously, about being able to run the ball better. Do you guys feel like you showed more of what you're capable of in this game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was definitely something we were, the show that we were more capable of. And then also this, this defense was a good defense and they did some things that really challenged us and what we had to do. So, you know, it was a little bit more difficult, just the things that they did with the D-line and the backers, just the way they flowed. It was kind of a little bit unorthodox, so it was a little bit harder, a little bit more challenging for us this week. Okay, in the red zone, trips right, they flow left, and this really opens it up for you, and Jake seems to find you quickly. Yeah, Jake did a great job. We did this all practice. You see all the guys flowing, and no one really comes out with me, so he just hit me right there. Okay, the only problem with scoring right there, the cannon, George Q. Cannon, he goes off right in front of you. Yes, it does, and it scares me. <laughs> like, yeah, it was really loud, and I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> Luckily, I saw it right before it went off. I was looking, and then boom, I was like, dang, that's super loud. So, <laughs> they're waiting I didn't get for you to scared. score. Mm -hmm. I pulled it one time. That thing's hard. That thing's hard. Yeah. Like, you go over there, and it is loud. It is, it is awesome. Okay, 19 yard run. This is the longest rush of the game. I thought, uh, Otava Tayase had a nice block on the edge for you. Yeah, right here. Um, you see it was a good block by the O-line. They all did their job. You see Caleb right here and Tava. They're going to set the edge. And once they set the edge, Caleb, the big block, Tava right there. And then, boom. Once you turned that corner around Tava, did you think you were going to score there? Um, I didn't. I was still looking inside, and then I saw the I saw the safeties and everything coming over. So you see that guy coming over. So I thought... I would have to get in, try to make someone miss, but you know, it was just on the sideline and hadn't done it for a while, so you're just trying to get used to it. Just, yep, just safe play, that was great, because you get to the one yard line, and I love 14 personnel, Ray Paulo in motion, four tight ends here. This is all in for the one yard score. Yeah, they do a great job. This is my favorite personnel, 14. You know, we got all my best friends out there, <laughs> big blockers. All the yeah. linemen and tight ends are your mm -hmm. best friends. The yep, ones. they're the ones that all make it happen. The receivers <laughs> too, but you know, I love it because usually when we're in 14, we're going to run the ball, so that's my favorite. Oh, heck yeah. And then right here, you see Ray Paulo with the class block and everyone else just moving people, Sonny. They're all just moving people, moving bodies, and then right there, get the ball to Waylon. <laughs> Waylon spikes it. This yeah, is yeah. great. Right there, we get the ball to Waylon right there, and then he spikes the ball and just 
cuts out right before. And refs didn't care? Nope. Luckily, no flag. They're a little more chill right now. Mm -hmm. with, yeah. with, uh, with celebrations. Mm -hmm. Waylon's hilarious, by the way. I, I love hearing him. Was this predetermined with Waylon or just in the moment? Like, here, dude. No, nah, it was in the moment. <laughs> yeah. He just came, he came back after I scored and the dude was kind of holding on to me, so I didn't know what to do. And then you see him walking back right there. I was like, you want it? He took it and then spikes it. <laughs> you see the ball go up and yeah. Have some fun, man. You just mm -hmm. scored. That's great. Yes, sir. So nice week one win. Now you have a short week at SMU. Another big game for BYU in week two. Yeah, they're a really good team. We've been watching them some, and, you know, we saw their game against Houston Christian and Nevada. You know, they're a good team, and you saw in the Nevada game they're able to overcome adversity and things like that. So we know it's going to be a good fight, and they're not going to give up, so we just got to keep out, go out there and just give it our all. Okay, well, best of luck in Dallas, and have fun, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. All right, it is a 1-0 BYU at 2-0 SMU on Friday night. Short week game, right? Uh, and for BYU, no practice on Sunday and travel on Thursday. So a lot gets done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for you guys. Yeah, and we've, we've done this before. So, I mean, I think we have a good system that, that, and a good format on, on how, to, how to get ready for this game. I, I don't mind it because there's, there's a lot of things that we need to improve on from, from our first game. And this is going to be a good matchup. I mean... I know their head coach, Rhett Lashley, does a great job, and he's a good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, it's just I have a lot of respect for him. I know how he runs his program, and I, I think um, it's going to be cool to get out there and be in I mean, they're, they're in the ACC now, so this is a lot of fun going against another power team and power conference team, so it's going to be a lot of fun to, to, to get there. And we, we have a lot of fans in the Dallas area, so it's going to be cool to see the Royal Blue out there. Those top 20 numbers from offense and defense are last year's numbers, but they're off to a good start this year as well. You actually faced Coach Lashley in his first year as SMU head coach when you played him in the bowl game. Yeah, we got to, got, got to spend a little bit more time um, getting to know each other. And, and um, I mean, the, the, the bowl game was really cool, but it came down to they went for two at the end. And, and uh, you know, it was, it was, it was a Jacob the, Robinson. Yeah, makes it was a play. good game. Yeah, Jacob, Jacob Robinson made the tackle. And, and so um, if they have to go for two this year, I don't know if they'll do the same play, but we'll see. <laughs> All right, yes, first year as a Power Conference member now for them. They're in the ACC. It is BYU and SMU. Friday night, it'll be a 7 o'clock Eastern time, 5 o'clock Mountain. Watch it on ESPN2 and hear it on BYU Radio. As we break, this is your reminder that your day-to-day -day Cougar Sports play-by-play -play happens on BYU Sports Nation with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and hear it on BYU Radio. When we come back, Deep Blue will profile quarterback Jake Retzloff, who will then join us live in studio right here when BYU football with Kalani Sitake continues back with more after this. BYU football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Health, official medical provider for BYU athletics, Waystar, and Breeze, the official hometown airline of BYU Athletics, in partnership with the San Bernardino International Airport. And welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Titake. Well, after putting in the work on the field to see his dream of becoming a Division I quarterback come true, Jake Retzloff saw that dream disappear temporarily after just three days in West Texas. But he continued to put in the work and saw his D1 dream fulfilled later and elsewhere at BYU. Tonight, we go deep blue with Jake Retzloff. Going into my senior year of high school, I was kind of slated to be the starting quarterback. And then COVID hit, and we weren't sure we were going to have a season, and, and we were doing all kinds of things in hope of uh, that happening in terms of preparing. So I went from, like, let's, let's go win a state championship, guys, to is there going to be a state championship? He was working hard throughout his whole youth and high school career. And then when he was supposed to showcase that, everything shut down. Everything was canceled. We were doing Zoom meetings and stuff like that. And the kids would sometimes talk about, you know, we'd talk about, hey, where'd you work out? What have you been doing? You know, some guys did not have access to weight room, some did. Jake was underneath the trailer, bench pressing from the floor. I sent that to everybody. I go, hey, your quarterbacks found a way to work out. What are you doing? You know, type of thing. And we worked out there every day with no idea where the season might have been down the horizon, just kind of kept grinding for it. No one had experienced this before, so there was no way of figuring out, okay, where do we go from there? And because he had no exposure, then the additional year that college athletes were given after COVID, because there was no playing that year, that 
really affected uh, coaches going out and recruiting too. It was kind of finally decided like the junior college route is the likely route. So it was kind of start looking around and my brother was already at Riverside City College, which was one of the top teams in the country. He was one of their top receivers. Coach Kraft was kind of just like, I have six guys. I, I already have six, seven guys. I already have a full plate of who to figure out to be the starter. He's, and more of just, I can't take on another guy. That was told to me, and I was like, all right, whatever you say, dude, I, I'm going to go where I'm wanted, and I'm going to succeed there. And so I went to Golden West College. Game four of the regular season features the Rustlers of Golden West and the RCC Tigers. They're the reigning national champions and hope to keep this going. They are 3-0 and oh as RCC this season. This time I saw Jake play was the Riverside Golden West game. Play fake for Rutzlav, who dives in. It's a Golden West touchdown. And was very impressed with him. Uh, we almost felt like the coaching staff for Golden West had our plays and our signals on defense. He was that good. I thought that was the best way of, instead of Jake being upset or disappointed that Tom was not interested, to show him what he missed. And that's kind of the way the attitude was. RCC desperate for a stop, and they will not get it. Touchdown, Golden West. Red Slap throws his fourth score of the football game. He finds the tight end leaking out the left side. During my time at Golden West, uh, I developed in a lot of ways. I kind of found my lane as a quarterback. I figured out, like, my identity. You know, I was looking around at some point in the season when we're undefeated. You know, I know we're going to playoffs. Uh, we're about to win the league. All right, where's the recruitment? Let's get the recruitment going. Like, let's kind of get this going. It still wasn't that loud in, in my corner. There wasn't a lot going on. So I heard from his dad that uh, he's going to take a trip to Utah. And we're stoked because finally Division One coaches are looking at him. So we were really excited, and we go out there, have a great weekend. So I was like, all right, let's go. That's, that's the best opportunity in front of me. Let's go. And so I... Ended up actually committing and then going on my visit, uh, which is a little unusual, but that's how it went. And so what I did for my visit, I actually drove out there, which is 12 hours. I'm here. I, I did it. I got over the hump. I got myself a scholarship. I'm in the building. I'm in my new little apartment and with my roommate who's on the team. I get to lay my head down at night for the first time with a sense of relief. It was like, oh, man, that's... It's nice to be here in this uncomfortable little twin-size bed, whatever it was. Go to sleep, wake up the next morning to a phone call from the offensive coordinator, and uh, he calls me and says, Hey, Jake, we just got your transcripts, and you're a few credits short of what you need to qualify for the scholarship. Jake had my husband talk to me and tell me because he knew what my reaction would be. Like, there was no way for me to, like, deliver that news to someone who'd sacrificed so much for me and done so much for me. I was like, I couldn't do it. Jake had told Steve that he's driving back home because he academically did not qualify. I can't even put into words, like, my initial reaction. It's like you climbed the mountain and then got thrown right back down. That was a tough drive. It was 12 hours, you know, when you feel like oncoming traffic looks tempting. It's definitely the low point and probably the lowest point of, you know, my life, honestly. Just because of how good the high was of finally being there, getting told, well, sorry, you got to go home and fix this. You got to go back to junior college and try again. What I did is I actually enrolled in Riverside because it was closer to home. I ended up meeting with Coach Tom Kraft and saying, hey, I think my best move is to start working out with you guys. What happened was he was so focused on trying to get looked at by college coaches that he did. He put his academics behind him, and he realized very fast that you can't do that. And then Jake learned he had to prove himself again academically, and he did. I guess it was a blessing in disguise, because if he ended up at UTEP, he would have never been looked at by BYU. Jake's a guy that we recruited out of junior college, which is rare these days. Just not very many junior college quarterbacks to get recruited anymore. When this whole recruiting process started and we were actually really starting to vet him out, I just knew him as a great thrower, you know, a really talented guy. As I got to know Jake, now in hindsight, you know, this guy's been such a gift to BYU, as a, not just to our team, but to the institution. The first example that comes to mind in handling adversity is 
the 99-yard interception pick six against Oklahoma last year. He chased the guy all the way to the goal line, 100 yards, literally sprinting the whole length of the field and almost making the stop. He didn't look around for any excuses. He just knew what he needed to get done. And he had to run off the field feeling terrible. When he came back to the sideline, his lips were blue. He could barely breathe. He could not stand up straight. And he went right back on the field and drove us down for a touchdown to take the lead again. The way he responded to that is a microcosm of how he responds to adversity. You need that. You need quarterbacks with short memories, whether it's good or bad. You need them to move on, and, and uh, we can always count on him to move on, whether it's a great result or a bad result. And that's evidence in how he reacted to that. Going from Corona Centennial to Golden West to UTEP for three days or a weekend, then to Riverside for a year, and then finally at BYU, it's been incredible. And from the beginning, it was just about getting over the hill and, and proving the guys wrong who didn't want me out of Centennial, who didn't want me at this level. And then, you know, proving the guys right who gave me the chance at a place like BYU. Wow. We've all been rooting for Jake from the get-go, but you see something like that, and you're even more in his corner. What a story. Yeah, and he's just been through a lot. And, and, and so last year, you know, going 0-4 as a starter was difficult, and a lot of people were, were doubting him, but he's already been through so much. So the guy has a relentless work ethic. He, he, he is, you can always count on him to do everything that he can and, and that he'll put all his effort into whatever it is. And he's a great teammate. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy and honored to be his coach. And so love that he's running our offense. And his relationship with Gary Bohan is awesome um, because those, they're two great people. But, man, he's, he's, a, he's a special uh, young man, and I, lo- I love being his coach. Well, the identity of BYU's starting quarterback was a well-kept secret up until game day last Saturday. But once the season opener kicked off, it was easy to see why Jake Retzloff was picked to take the first snaps under center. Tonight, off his first win as a BYU starting quarterback, he makes his debut inside Studio C on the Sitake Show. Please welcome a guy we just got to know pretty well, Jake Retzloff. Thanks for coming. My man. All right. I'm not sure. I'm never sure if the guys are able to see the stories. Were you able to watch that that video no, piece about yourself? I wasn't. Not gotta, yet. I'm you gotta go find it. it. Okay. You yeah. gotta go see it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. No. We. Uh, I. I just love the way it was put together and 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 learned more about you than I knew. Um, well, it wasn't your first start uh, this past Saturday, but it was the first time you got to celebrate a win after a start. How big was last Saturday for you? It was, it was huge. It was everything. It was some of the most fun I've ever had in my life um, on that field Saturday night for sure. How about the environment in the building? It was unbelievable. My favorite moment was probably going into the fourth quarter when Cosmo comes out and we get the crowd rolling. Uh, I, if you look at our sideline, the entire sideline is dancing on the field. Like It was a lot of fun. Kalani tends to say most of us dancing for victories in the locker room, though, right? I mean, he, he <laughs> generally... He's got enough to go around, that's sure. Yeah, okay. I'm getting old, though. I'm getting <laughs> old. And then, and when, just so that everybody knows, when the crowd was getting crazy, Jake was dancing, too, trying to get him to calm down and be that's, quiet. Yeah. It is a good idea. It, it was that too a couple loud. times yeah. on Saturday yeah, a night. Times. So we're going to have to just kind of, like, tone it down when the offense is on. If the defense is on, <laughs> just just yeah. have at it. Be, be, be crazy and loud. Yeah, we want to be on defense to start the fourth quarter, that's for sure. <laughs> there you go. We want to be on offense as much as we can. True. So. <laughs> uh, True. D- describe the quarterback competition. And, and in particular, your appreciation for Gary Bohannon as, as a player and as a teammate. Uh, I can't say enough about Gary. Um, he's an incredible guy, uh, incredible teammate, incredible leader, incredible father, uh, just a person that, like, you want to be around. He's, uh, he's awesome. Everybody on the team loves him. Nobody on the team feels any sort of way towards anybody in this competition. It wasn't like uh, everybody was hopping on one guy's side or the other. I think that... Maybe the team had a feeling, but the team was okay either way. I, I know that's for sure because he's a, a heck of a ball player, um, and he pushed me to be my best this fall and spring. Yeah, you observed the dynamic between the whole room, really, but these two in particular. Your thoughts on that? I think the whole team felt comfortable with either one of them playing, but you, you have to go through the competition, and, and you have to reward the person that wins it. And so the, uh, even though we felt comfortable with two, it, it's we know we can use two, and we actually like the other quarterbacks too. They're, they're gifted. I mean, the, the entire competition made the whole room better. But the room was better because it had Jake and it had Gary in there. 
and the way they, the, the, the professionalism and the love that they shared for each other, uh, you can't fake it. And then the team saw it, and so it just trickles down to everybody else. And that, the, the, if the, the quarterbacks can handle competition really well, then imagine what the other groups can do too. You've been the number two behind Keaton last year. You know what it's like to be the guy that has to be ready when your number is called, as it was last year. So you know that uh, the room has to be kind of unified and everybody's got to have the same level of focus and preparation. Yeah, I mean, I say the biggest fans of BYU football are the guys actually in those rooms. Like, we want to succeed more than anybody. I can guarantee you that. So uh, everybody in that room is so supportive now uh, that it's all set and done. But And, and Gary especially is super supportive of me. And, and we talk about the game plan. We talk about what we're seeing on the film and stuff like that and, and then what's going on in the field as well. So... Um, yeah, the guys are all super supportive because um, we all want to see wins at the end of the day. And so no matter who's out there, everybody wants a win. In the video profile we just watched of you, it really spelled out well. Uh, your stops at JUCO, uh, your weekend in El Paso, and then ending up here. How do you kind of describe your journey, football playing journey, that puts you in Provo, Utah here in 2024? Uh, there's no way to describe it other than I'm in the place I'm supposed to be at right now. Um, Something I came up with in high school was just stay patient and never settle. Uh, and I had to have a lot of patience through this journey, and I didn't at times. Um, and here we are now, and I'm definitely not settling for where I'm at. Uh, it's, it was a roller coaster of a ride, as you guys saw. Um, I'm grateful for every part of it, though. I wouldn't change any of it. We see the Star of David around your neck. Uh, as a man of faith at a school of a different faith, have you observed in this community um, a commonality of some beliefs and understanding uh, a welcoming. How do you describe you settling into this community? Yeah, nothing but support. Um, coming to a faith-based university, you really don't know what to expect, um, but it's been nothing but support. And, and the funny thing is I've found that members of the church have a funny fascination with Judaism. Uh, <laughs> and that's a fact. And so that's made it super special. I get guys come to, come to me in the locker room uh, at random times, like, ask me a little question here or there, and, and I'll ask the same question right back to them, and it's awesome. It just builds understanding. Uh, it builds the team together. I think that the more we talk about it, the more we get to just talk about something that's so important to us, it brings us all together. And so that was true this summer. That was true when uh, Dan, our nutritionist, brought in a kosher food truck, which was so it was like surprising to me when he did it. Um, and I was so grateful for that. And so the guys got to experience this, got to ask me questions about this. Um, it's, it's so cool to have all that. And uh, it's so accessible here at a place like BYU where faith is so embraced. Yeah, does it help you be yourself in a way? Yeah, no doubt. It's like I have definitely taken up a stronger um, faith and a stronger experience just because I'm here. And it's so faith-based. It, it forces you to be faith-based and, and you know, encourages you to be faith-based in your faith. And so it's been awesome to be able to grow uh, as a person in so many ways and through Judaism um, at a school like this because it is so encouraged. Kalani, what about that intersection of faith that you've witnessed? Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the gospel of Christ that, that we preach. And, and we, we have to run the program the same way. And we, we talk uh, about the leaders of our church. We talk about our religion. But we, we encourage everyone on our team that, that we have team members that are of the Muslim faith and that we encourage them to share and talk. it's all about good things too we talk about good wholesome things you know and and in a world where things are divided it's good where everyone can kind of sit there and talk about more more the the common ground than, than the differences and uh, you look at the things that that jake went through it, it's definitely divine design that he's supposed to be here I, I know that he's supposed to be here with our team and the adversity that we went through he, he's the guy that to, to overcome all of that you know even from last year and so uh, now we're at this place, and we're, we, we have a lot of confidence going into this season and going to this next game. Uh, we, we know that there's a lot of things that we can improve on, but we also know that we appreciate each other more than just the game of football. Like It's important for him to be in, in our lives. We'll talk more football with you, Jake. And, Jake, I speak for all of Cougar Nation when I say you, we're glad you're here. <laughs> and we're glad you're here on the show, too. Uh, we'll take a break on the show. We come back, we'll play a game we're calling Jake's Over the Top. This is BYU Football. Come on, talk to you. Back after this. Well, um, last Saturday, uh, Jake finished the night with 348 passing yards, three touchdowns, including a 57-yard bomb to JoJo Phillips. So it got us thinking about a game we're tonight going to call Jake's 
Over the Top. Now, this is why we're doing it. Uh, side note, according to producer Hema, Jake's Over the Top was a classic ice cream joint. And it was Hema's favorite place to go after football games. It doesn't exist anymore. But we thought Jake's Over the Top would be a nice name for a game that involves you throwing deep balls. So here's how the game works. Similar to what Jacob Robinson did with us last week, we're going to show you five of your top deep balls at BYU. And you have to rank them one to five without knowing what the next one's going to be. So you're going to see it and you're going to go, that was pretty good. Maybe there's a better one. So we're going to show your first one. This is just last week. This is Jake Retzloff to Keelan Marion. And I believe this is 52 yards. And yeah, this was uh, three white jerseys and one striped jersey. Okay, so that's one of your deep balls. One of your five that we're going to show you. Where would you rank this one? Oh, that's tough. There's Three guys there definitely puts it higher. But <laughs> and, the ref. To, and, and the ref. And the ref diving out of the way made it fun. <laughs> I'm trying to think what you have coming. Exactly. I'm gonna, this is the challenge of the whole thing. Man, that is tough. I'm going to put this one at, with three guys, it's got to be number two. Okay. Well, yeah. so, so there's only one that can beat it. So we're putting the, uh, the ball to Keel and Marion last week into triple coverage, quadruple coverage, we'll call it with the ref. Uh, number two for the time being. All right, so Marion against Southern Illinois. Here's the second deep ball we're going to show you. It came last year against Iowa State, and I think this one's to Cody oh, Epps. Man. This one was awesome. Cody made a great play here. Uh, I shouldn't have put that one at two. I'm going to go. <laughs> Dang, I wish I, I didn't think of that one. I'm going to put that one at three. Uh, but you wish it was two, it was at least two. Down. Yeah, I kind of wish it was two. Okay. Was, but, yeah, that was only double cover, not triple, but. Uh, yeah, that and was he makes too, a really nice catch, by Cody the way, with the safety coming across. And Cody made an unbelievable catch, yeah, for sure, against uh, two men. Okay. With a bit of regret, we're putting Cody Epps at three and keeping Keelan Marion at two. Uh, the third ball we're going to show you, again, we're just going back to last week. This is JoJo. JoJo Phillips. Yeah. This is my one. Uh, this is my one. JoJo, what's funny, me and JoJo, uh, <laughs> my first throwing touchdown in college was to him. His first touchdown catch was from me. Uh, so it was only fitting to have this be my first touchdown pass of the year. Um, and I think that was his second catch of his career in two touchdowns. Second, so yeah. that's one just uh, – it was, it was one of those plays that, like, came together perfectly. When it was called, uh, I checked the defense at the line of scrimmage. I was like, this could be really, really good. I turned around and saw the safety take off with Parker. Shout out Parker Kingston is the reason that was a touchdown. Um, and JoJo just ran right past the defense. That, that's number one. Okay, in the play, I'm just calling – the sc- and it wasn't until later that I went back and realized just how – long that ball was in the air that was 60 plus yards in the air and you just kind of winged that like it was nothing um you get asked the question how far can you throw a football not often but of course when you do that they're gonna ask uh yeah that one when you get adrenaline of a football game you can throw the ball as far as you think you can throw it um i overthrew a couple balls that because of the adrenaline i was overthrowing them and in practice they wouldn't have been overthrown but that ball i mean with the adrenaline of a game that the way that one felt was so easy, so I, I gotta say I hope I can get seventy, seventy five in a game. <laughs> that that would be awesome. <coughs> I, I can't do anything with the ball that far. <laughs> All right, the fourth pass we're gonna show you. Um, wow, this is a lot of good stuff last week. Uh, Parker Kingston. Oh yeah. That was awesome. That wasn't the bomb that JoJo's was. That wasn't the bomb that Little Cody's Little was. yak involved here, but little it's a big yak. gainer. It's a, it's a good chunk a play. A lot of good yak. He was pretty open. That's as open as they get. Um, I think you're coming with the Oklahoma State to Keanu Hill next. So no, I'm going to put that one at five. I, I, I like the way you there. work. You know exactly what we're doing. This is perfect. Yeah. So it leaves one spot, and we are going to go back to Stillwater. 2023 season finale last year, and it's Kibo. Yeah. Keanu Hill, this is, this is a really good bar right here. This is a really good play call. My coach called this. We got the deep over by those guys were really doing a good job stopping the run. So the safeties were coming up on the play action. And so I faked it and said, all right, go get it, Kibo. Chucked it up. Love Kibo because he's going to go up and get every ball that he can. He may not be the fastest, um, but he beat those guys there and made a great play. And we set up a touchdown a couple of plays later to Keelan uh, on the reverse. So, yeah, that was fun. I'll put that at four for sure. I mean, lands at four. Uh, it could have gone higher no, had you known one was coming, but uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I knew that was coming. I think that's where I would have put it. The only okay. one is I would. I mean, that was double covered too, so that beats Parker's for that reason. But as they say, uh, dropped it in the bucket. Like that was perfectly placed, right? Yeah, that's. It's hard to do what what Jake does. He's being humble right now, but that's okay. <laughs> we need him to stay humble. He did a great job. That was Jake's over the top, by the way. I thought he just nailed it. Very good. 
And we know many more great deep balls to come. All right, after the break, we'll have some in-studio Q&A for the coach and Jake Retzloff as we continue with BYU football with Kalani Sitake. Stay with us. Which one do you think, though? The one to Ethan, obviously. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Health, official medical provider for BYU Athletics, Smarty, Address Data Wizards, and Ken Garf. We hear you. We welcome you back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Well, I've been asking uh, all the questions to this point. We're going to turn it over to our studio audience for a couple of quick questions. It's our Q&A segment presented by Ken Garf. We hear you. We've got a mic. We've got people. We've got people who are going to give us their name and their question. Go ahead, sir. Hi, I'm Dave D. Um, this question is for Kalani, or if Jake wants to chime in. Uh, which group has had the greatest improvement since last season? Oh, man. Greatest improvement since last season. And what group hasn't? In my yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you yeah. feel the same way, but every group has leveled up. Whether it's a new guy who showed up or the same guys here have all elevated their play to another level. Uh, who ha I mean, the the receivers, the new guys being here for another year, their their play leveled up in a lot of ways. The running back room, Hinkley or Potty coming back is going to be a, an incredible piece. Uh, the tight ends are all well rounded, offensively at least. I mean, O line too. Those guys got a lot better, and it's a lot of the same faces you've seen, but they got a lot better. No, defensive, you know better than me in defensive. Yeah, they're, they're all fine. They get more, they get some turn, turnovers and touchdowns, and I'll, I'll tell you who, who got better. <laughs> <laughs> On a bigger picture point, though, um, in the era of the portal, keeping as much of your group together as you can from one season to the next is proving to be pretty important, I think. Yeah, and I think the, the, the key is just, you know, we, we have a, a strong culture on our team, and, and I think the guys wanted to prove that, that last year wasn't what they were about, you know, so there's a huge sense of urgency to, to show that we're way better than that and that was just one one game but we got to got the next one coming up that we're looking forward to it okay next question your name and your question sir yeah my name is scott hey kalani this question's for you i'm a california transplant we used to always watch byu as they would come out we would go to the pregame firesides and the service projects have you thought about reinstituting firesides for home games yeah we haven't really done that i mean when i when i got here i just wanted to try to do the firesides on the off on the um in the off season, and uh, even even when we do our fan fest, we go on on different areas that we're going to play and do the fan fest there and do a fireside there. But it's really difficult to get to do the fa the firesides night before a game, and and so I, I don't know if that, that's something that we'll we'll bring back. I mean, maybe maybe night after a game if if, if we uh, towards the end of the season we can do that, but probably not not before. But you are getting out to Cougar Nation. It's just happening usually in the offseason. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the firesides and the fan fest are important to us. So we, we were out and we're doing that. We, we did that this, this last spring. We'll do it again next spring. All right. As we take another break, here's this week's BYU football trivia question. Brought to you by Breeze, the official hometown airline of BYU Athletics. True or false? In the 1980 Holiday Bowl versus SMU, the game-winning points and BYU's miraculous comeback came on a Hail Mary touchdown pass from Jim McMahon to Clay Brown. True or false? The answer coming up next. More BYU football with Kalani Kitake. After this. Boy, took a lot of flack in the commercial break about how the question was constructed. And maybe they have a point. No pun intended. Uh, here's the setup to the question. Uh, it's, I mean... Okay, I say it's false. Jake said the question is bad. Okay, so <laughs> either way, the act, this tied the game at 45 all. Kurt Gunther hit the PAT to actually win the game 46-45. Uh, either way, as great as that pass was, there still was one more play to come, and Kurt had to make the kick, and that he did. So there you go. Okay, BYU and SMU. They do it again. That's why we included SMU in the question. It's Cougars and Mustangs uh, Friday night, uh, two hours before kick. You can listen to the pregame on BYU Radio, uh, watch the pregame on BYU TV, catch the game on ESPN2 and BYU Radio, postgame coverage on both uh, formats afterward. Uh, the uniform BYU will be wearing this week comes courtesy of at BYU Tracker on X and Instagram. Here is the uniform. I think with this particular face mask, it's the first time this exact combo has been worn. White and navy for you guys. White and navy. Are you thumbs up on this one, Jake? Yeah, huge thumbs up. I love our white and navy combo. We wore it last year at Kansas. I like it a lot. It's going to look super clean uh, out there in the heat. 
Um, it's going to look good. I like it a lot. Our, Col Navy, our Navy's cool. I know sometimes Navy can get controversial. I do like it. Here. Kaladi's position is whatever we win in, he, he likes the best. So there you go. Well, All right. He's got the Y on it. I'm happy. Guys, good luck this weekend. All right. Great Appreciate having you. It. All right, that'll do it. Good night, everybody. Go Cougs. Have a great week.